Real YouTube is talk about lions, one billion lions, or every Pokemon. Since the beginning of time, a question has plagued humanity. A question unsolvable by the greatest minds over the course of human history. A question that tore at the fabric of society and was responsible for the collapse of countless nations. A question with no answer. Until now, who would win one of every Pokemon or one billion lions? Now, I know what you're thinking. A billion lions is a lot of lions. And that's true. The other thing you might be thinking is, why are you, Wolf Click, professional model, going to succeed in answering this question when so many before you have failed? What do you have that the entirety of humankind was lacking? The answer may surprise you. I, unlike Socrates, Plato, Aphelios, etc., am a professional gamer. Moreover, I am a professional Pokemon player and a former world champion. Moreover, I am named after an animal. I am the ultimate intersection and the only person alive, dead, or unborn capable of solving this mystery. Before we start tackling this Goliath of a question, we have to establish our methodology. One of the reasons that so many before me have failed to provide a satisfactory answer to this question is because there's been absolutely no standardization in the argumentative approach. When you make up the rules, you can create whatever outcome you personally prefer. Therefore, it's important to begin by deciding on the absolute best rule set. Let's address the elephant in the room. One of the first topics broached in this conversation is always the Pokedex. The Pokedex makes some fantastical claims uh, to keep it light. Macargo is hotter than the surface of the sun. Gardevoir can create small black holes. Yveltal absorbs all life when it dies. Magikarp is a fish. I could go on. Now, the issue with using the Pokedex as a basis for your argument is that the Pokedex is absolutely bullshit. I don't think a single person arguing for the side of the Pokemon honestly believes in the accuracy of the claims made by the decks. In fact, in order for something like the aforementioned Macargo to actually be a true claim, our entire understanding of the Pokemon universe would end up being so fundamentally flawed that we wouldn't be able to proceed anyway. Therefore, no Pokédex. Additionally, we won't be using the anime. I don't think I need to tell you that the anime is an unrealistic representation of Pokemon. Uh, my primary gripe with the anime is that it doesn't follow any consistent rules and is absolutely unbelievable in a general case. The lions will not have the option of aiming for the horn. Now, onto the lions. Once again, a billion lions is a lot of lions, dude. In fact, it's a lot of lions. The current estimated global lion population is roughly 20,000 lions. Now, comparing that number to a billion lions, which, may I remind you, is a lot of lions, it's practically zero. That's a difference of 999,980,000 lions. In other words, to claim that we currently have 1 billion lions on Earth is about as fantastical as claiming we currently have real-life Pokemon on Earth. So, what do we do? Well, I think the answer is relatively clear. We can't use Earth as a battleground. We can't make hypothetical arguments about time travel, black holes, or a cocoon that absorbs all life. And, unfortunately, we can't aim for the horn. What we're left with and what we have to turn to is the only place we can look for cold, hard facts. The actual video game of Pokemon itself. To me, using the video game as a medium is the only logical option remaining to us. There are not only one of every Pokemon in the games, but there are even Pokemon that resemble lions. Moreover, every creature in the game has mathematical values that we can observe and analyze, and even do calculations with thanks to the damage formula. We encounter our next roadblock here. It should be obvious that we can model real-life lions as Pokemon, making predictions on their base stats, typing, and move pool. However, we do not have a 1 billion lions versus one of every Pokemon game mode. In my opinion, that's a pretty big oversight. Game Freak, fix your terrible game. Is this the end of the road? OBJECTION! Thankfully, thanks to Generation 6, the answer is no. Let me explain. Normally, most people playing through Pokemon participate primarily in single battles, one Pokemon versus one Pokemon at a time. Most people are also aware that there are some variations in battles. The later games introduce other modes such as double battles, triple battles, rotation battles, multi-battles, and, exclusive to Generation 6, there was a unique battle mode introduced called Horde Battles. Horde Battles differ from the other modes listed in a few key aspects. The way Horde Battles work is they feature your one Pokémon against five wild Pokémon. Unlike many of the other game modes, they are only accessible playing against the computer. You can't battle other people in this format. 
For that reason, they're often overlooked as they were mostly useful only for EV training in Generation 6. Why do we care about Horde battles? Well, they answer a question that otherwise would have prevented us from advancing. A little known mechanic in Pokemon has to do with spread moves. A spread move only exists in game modes where there is more than one Pokemon that can be hit with the move, such as double and triple battles. Spread moves aren't any different from normal moves for singles players or people who only play through the main story, they function exactly like every other move. However, in a double battle, these moves change a bit. Moves like Earthquake and Surf hit multiple Pokemon on the field. In order to balance this, the game developers put a hidden mechanic in. Any move that targets multiple Pokemon will be at 75% of its original power. For example, Earthquake, which is a 100 base power move in a normal single battle, is only 75 power in a double battle. Why is this relevant? Well, what happens when there's more than two Pokemon? Does every successive potential target cause another 75% reduction in power? And this is where Horde battles come in. In a Horde battle, a spread move has a 75% reduction in power. This is also the case in triple battles. This answers our question, and we are finally able to proceed. Regardless of the number of targets, all spread moves have a reduction of 75% of their original power, as long as the number of targets is greater than one. Spread moves have one additional fun little trait, which we've already touched on, but to make it explicitly clear, a spread move will hit all available targets, without limit. In a double battle, it will hit two. In a triple battle, it will hit three. And in a horde battle, it will hit five. With this, we can infer that if there were a billion targets, the spread move would still hit all of them. We're ready to begin. For this experiment, we'll model each individual lion as a normal type Pyroar, which is the most lion-like Pokemon. I think it's pretty obvious that this is quite generous to the lions, but I think it's fair to round up, so to speak, since we're estimating here anyway. Now, let's talk about the Pokemon. Whenever the lions versus Pokemon debate comes up, uh, everyone always talks about how 1 billion lions is a lot of lions. Nobody ever talks about what you could do if you had one of every Pokemon in the field at the same time. I'm here to change that. For this next section, I enlisted my good friend and Pokemon researcher DeWobblefett's help to do some of the calculations. With one of every Pokemon available to us, the most optimal strategy is going to be to take one Pokemon with one powerful spread move and beef it up with as much support as possible. This also makes the calculations easier as we're modeling all lions as normal type Pyroar. For this strategy, the best candidate is Kyogre. It has access to one of the strongest spread moves in the game, which is Water Spout, a 150 base power water move, and since it's a legendary Pokemon, it has rather exceptional stats as well. So we have our damage dealer. Let's look at the support. The strongest support move that is also widely distributed is called Helping Hand. Helping Hand always moves first, and provides a 1.5 times power boost to whichever Pokemon it targets. This means that we'll have a 1.5 to the X multiplier for our Kyogre. And how many Pokemon learn Helping Hand? 308, but we'll want to save one of those Pokemon for later in our setup, so let's just call it 307. That's a multiplier of 1.5 raised to the 307th power, which comes out to be 1.1 uh, times 10 to the 54, or 1.7 septendecillion times? And before you say this wouldn't work, you can only use one helping hand, think again. In triple battles, you can easily use more than one helping hand, and you get a boost for each one. Even today in Sword and Shield, you can still get multiple Helping Hand boosts if you use instructions to the Helping Hand Pokemon or if you did multiple Helping Hands in a max raid battle. But we're not done yet. There are some Pokemon that power up their partners with their abilities instead of their moves. These are Stonejourner with Power Spot and Chargebug with Battery. These are 1.3 times multipliers on top of our already enormous boost. Now, 1.3 might not sound like a lot, but there's a secret here. There are 58 Pokemon that can't learn Helping Hand but can learn Roleplay. Roleplay is a move that copies the target's ability and replaces their own ability with it. This means that we can get that 1.3 multiplier 60 times total, counting the original Charger Bug and Stonejourner. 1.3 raised to the 60th power is another 6.8 million times, on top of our Helping Hand boosts. Two of these Roleplay Pokemon are too slow to move before Kyogre, which are Stakataka and Sandygast, but we can get around that by having a Pokemon use Quash on Kyogre to make it move last. Won't that make the Lions move before Kyogre? Well, we can get around that by having Prankster Ryolu use Quick Guard, which blocks all priority effects, then have Greninja use Map Block, which blocks all damage, and finally Klefki can use Crafty Shield, which blocks all non-damaging effects. The Lions have no way of touching Kyogre at all, or any of our other Pokemon for that matter. There's a few more effects we can use to make our Kyogre even stronger. One is to have Araquanid use Entrainment to give Kyogre its ability, Water Bubble, which doubles Water-type moves power. Another is to make sure it's raining, another 1.5 times boost. There's lots of Pokemon that can learn Rain Dance. Another thing we can do is give Kyogre plus 6 special attack. 
That's easy with something like Safeguard followed by six uses of Flatter. Again, we've got plenty of Pokemon to pick from that already aren't doing anything else this turn. So we have our 1.3 to the 60th and our 1.5 to the 306 boost multiplied for about 1.1 times 10 to the 61st, which is a really, really big number. Then we have our Rain, Stab, and Water Bubble boost for another 4.5 times multiplier. We do have to reduce this by 75% because it's a spread move, but I think it's becoming more and more apparent that that isn't going to matter. To further cut off any potential the Lions might have, Let's also throw in Magic Room and Faint for good measure. Magic Room ensures no items will be able to help the Lions out, and nothing we're doing really relies on items either, so it's no loss for us. Faint also removes the ability for Wide Guard to do anything, in case the Lions somehow learn that. Something like Trappage can use Faint for us. Lastly, to really put the nail in the coffin, there's one Pokemon with a rather unique move. This move is called Instruct, and it tells the target, remember that move you just used? Yeah, do that again. This move is unique to Oranguru, but the Pokemon Smeargle can also learn it since it learns every move. Meaning all the damage we just did, we get to do it three times. You might say, but Kyogre was quashed earlier. H how are you going to use Instruct? Well, that's easy. All you have to do is use Quash on the Instruct Pokemon too. If multiple Pokemon have been quashed, it just goes in the order of who quashed first. So as long as we quash Kyogre first, then Smeargle, then Oranguru, everything will be just fine. So when all is said and done, how much damage is each lion taking? Well, let's take a look at it. Thanks again to Dewobblefett for helping me with calculating this. For the base power, Kyogre has access to our 307 helping hands, as well as 60 helpings of power spot and battery from roleplay. Water spout is a 150 base power move if we're at full HP, and we're guaranteed to be at full HP because nothing can pass all the protection we've set up with map block, quick guard, and crafty shield. This comes out to somewhere around 1.1 times 10 raised to the 63rd power, or a little over a Vigintillion base power. And no, I didn't make this word up, that's really what the number is called when it's that large. For the special attack stat, let's assume Kyogre is level 100 and maxed out on special attack for a starting value of 438. We've got a times 4 multiplier from our plus 6 boost, in addition to the 2 times multiplier from Water Bubble. Compared to base power, this is a much more modest 3504. As for the lion's special defense, let's be generous and assume all the lions are level 100 and have maximum special defense. This gives each of the billion lions 254 special defense total, since we're basing them off of Pyroar. We have enough information to give us our base damage now. When calculating base damage, you multiply a value that corresponds to your level alongside base power and attack, then divide by defense, then divide by 50, and finally add 2 at the end. A Pokemon at level 100 will have this level value be 42. Working out the numbers, this base damage comes out to around 1.37 times 10 raised to the 64th power. Now, there's still a few more things to be done. Spread moves get applied next, cutting this down to 75% of what it would otherwise be. Rain applies after, boosting back up by 50%. Finally, there is the random damage roll. Let's assume all of the billion lions are lucky and take the minimum damage possible from Water Spout. That's again an 85% reduction in the damage they could otherwise take. Finally, you have to account for Stab, which gives Kyogre another 1.5 times damage boost from using a Water type attack while being a Water type Pokemon. In the end, this gives you a value of 1.96 times 10 to the 64th, or this absurdly large number you see on your screen now. To give you an idea of how big that number is, compare it to the number of cells in your body, 10 to the 14th. Or how about the number of seconds that have ticked down since the start of the universe when time began, which is about 10 to the 20th. Or another example, the total number of DNA base pairs in every living thing on Earth is about 10 to the 37th. Or how about the number of hydrogen atoms in the sun, which is approximately 10 to the 57th power. But this amount of damage is bigger than all of those, clocking in at around 10 to the 64th power. That's a lot of damage. Of course, that is easily enough to KO all of these lions so many times over that it's not even funny. Even if each of the billion lions had a billion HP and a billion special defense, that literally wouldn't do anything to help because a billion is only 10 to the 12th. 10 to the 64th is just way too high for the lions to do anything about it. And even if they survive somehow, Instruct means two more of these water spouts are coming. There's just no way out for the lions. Now, all of this setup also only requires us to use 395 Pokemon, which isn't even half of all of the available Pokemon. Not counting different formies, there's 898 Pokemon in the Pokedex. Heck, almost anything can do this because spread moves, when combined with 307 helping hands, make any spread move enough to KO all of the 1 billion lions. Now, if you want to cross your arms and pout and say, but spread moves would keep the same multiplier. 
then you are breaking game mechanics. And if you want to do that, then we have to deal with the Pokedex and anime powers of Pokemon again, where Dialga and Celebi can time travel with other Pokemon to win all the lions or cubs and destroy them before they can even become adult lions or whatever ridiculous situation you can come up with. So, in conclusion, who would win between one of every Pokemon or a billion lions? I think it's pretty clear that it's going to be the Pokemon. When you look at it in the context of the mechanics of the actual games, there's just no way to get around the insane power of spread moves and sheer number of Pokemon that learned Helping Hand. Now, before we wrap up here, I do want to debunk some common arguments. The Pokemon don't have infinite PP! Uh, this scenario ends in one turn, so PP doesn't matter. Celebi can time travel and kill the lions before they were born! Celebi can Helping Hand and do something actually useful instead. A billion lions is a lot of lions! Okay, that one's pretty fair. What if the lions hold focus? Uh, we have Instruct, which happens three times, and we also have Magic Room, which turns off all items. What about the Lion Ladder? If the Lions were on the ladder, they would be stuck in Pokeball tier. But to summarize, this can't even be called a contest. It's a slaughter. Even if we delve into hypothetical and probable arguments like, what if the Lions have Wide Guard? There's always an answer, in this case, Faint. After centuries of being plagued by a question seemingly unanswerable, we have found an answer so overwhelming it can't possibly be refuted. With my life's work finally accomplished, I await my Nobel Peace Prize. Maybe next time I'll tackle a question that's actually difficult. Who would win? One billion lions? Or the sun? <laughs>